kisel ya mozuta lia bazile ki mozuta ta enrista la bazile ki mozute te e ri bazile ki mozute ke abazute ke father we thank you for all you are doing on this altar we give you praise oh god for neymar troop we exalt your name for this end of year fast we thank you for this journey through the book of Joshua, we thank you for how you have strengthened us, how you have encompassed us with your mercy and favor. We thank you for the blood that avails for us, that atones for our sin. We thank you for the propitiation by the blood. We thank you for renewal of our spirit. We thank you for restoration of all things. We give you praise, oh God. Father, we come because of the blood of Jesus. Father, you said we should come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We have come again. We enter in, O God. We bless your name, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Mighty God, General Superintendent of the old galaxies, the Prime Minister of the old world, the Commander of the Angelic Army, Man of War, Mighty Man in Battle. We give you praise, O God, the Good Shepherd, Everlasting God, the Great Potentate, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Mighty God. The Savior of our soul, our Redeemer that liveth, oh Father, dream giver, dream keeper, covenant keeping God, protocol breaker. We bless your name because you are God. We worship you. You are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Yes, you are the master of the universe. You are the husband man. You are the vine dresser. You are the vine. We are your branches. We bless your name, the man of Galilee. We bless your name, our great teacher. We bless your name, our counselor, our comforter, our helper. Ah, yes, Lord, our standby, our teacher our intercessor. We give you praise, the apostle of our faith, our great high priest, the one that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. You know us through and through. You know us very well. Ah, you died for our sin. We praise you. Ah, because of you, we can stand. We have no right standing of ourselves but you. Ah, Lord, we silence every contention, every accusation. We silence every contention in the court of heaven. And we take covering in the blood of Jesus. We enter in. We thank you because you are God. We bless you because you are king. We give you praise, O oh God. Ah, la basileki aba. Ah, general superintendent, we give you praise, O oh God. Ah, trinity in council, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, ancient of days, the secret of the 24 elders. We give you praise, O oh God. Ah, the grand commander of heaven, Eriba Selekiamba, and some old man, the ageless one, ancient of days, I take your mean, we bless your name. Ah, ribo suloki muzu kateli ya basilekia, iraba gadalia, our worship, the center of our attention, the center of our attraction, our God, our miracle, our sign, our Lord, our wonder. We bless your name, governor of our nations, Eli Bazile, Kiamazuta, Tata, miracle worker. We give you praise, our breath, Ezila, Kiamazuta, the living one, the ancient one, Eriba Gadalia, Ezada, da, 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 everlasting one, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. We give you all the praise and glory. Be thou glorified today in Jesus' name. Mighty name, amen. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed, our souls are found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, oh Lord. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Our souls are found rest. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks. Oh, we give you thanks. We are so blessed. Our souls are found rest. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. You are brighter than the morning star. Mm. You are glorious, more beautiful than the lilies that grows by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, how wonderful you are. 
You are brighter than the morning star. Mm -hmm. You are glorious, more glorious than the lilies that grow by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamond. There is nothing that I desire compares with you. Oh, Zamazile Kiamazutata. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamond. There is nothing that I desire compares with you. Oh, there is nothing, there is nothing that I desire. Nothing that I desire compares with you. You are the mighty man in battle, El Shaddai. You are the mighty man in battle, Jehovah Nisi. You are the mighty man in battle, Elohim. You are the mighty man in battle, glory to your name. You are the mighty man in battle, El Shaddai, you are the mighty man in battle. Jehovah Shikenu, you are the mighty man in battle. El Leon, you are the mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power there is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power, there is power in the blood. There is healing, there is healing anointing in the blood. There is healing, there is healing anointing in the blood. There is healing anointing in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is healing, there is healing in the blood. There is refining fire in the blood. Refine as fire, there is consecrating fire in the blood. Era mosayada, there is fire, fire. Refine is fire, there is consecrating fire in the blood. There is power, there is powerful anointing in the blood. We tap from you, Lord, there is powerful anointing in the blood. In Amazile Kyama, there is powerful anointing in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power, there is fire in the blood. Our God is a great God, is a great King above all other gods. Oh, hallelujah. Our God is a great God, is a great King above all other God. Is a Mazutata, our God is a great God, is a great King above all other gods. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your holy name. Our generation shall praise your name. 
our generation shall praise your holy name, almighty God, almighty God, almighty God, almighty he God, our generation, our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Oh, yes, Lord, our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your holy name. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory sheds on our way. While we we'll do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the sky. But his smile quickly dries it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear, can abide where we we'll trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our totally don't richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Welcome to day 19 of our journey through the book of Joshua. Um, welcome to the 19th day. And um, we can all agree that the Joshua generation is a picture of what God has in stock for the New Testament church. Everything that he has preordained and planned is actually, you know, uh, hidden in the Joshua generation. We know that Christ in the Old Testament was concealed, but we see how he has revealed to us in a great exposition in the past, you know, 
um, 21 days as we go through the book of Joshua. And we know without a doubt that we are the Yeshua generation, indeed the Jesus generation. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. The Bible says that the Lord God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost, and Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, even all them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We know without a doubt that as we step into the new year, we are going with the same anointing of, of our Yeshua to transform our world. We thank the Lord for bringing us thus far through this journey of discovery. It has indeed been an awesome joy to see that we are... Um, we are the Joshua generation, and we are drawing near to the very end of our uh, book study of the uh, of the study of Joshua. And the Bible says, "Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof." I declare that you and your generation will never recover from the revelations that have been delivered to us on this altar. Our topic today is monumental altar. Take it from the context of chapter twenty-two. Chapter 22 of the book of Joshua. Let us quickly look at the chapter before we pray. Joshua 22, I will read from verse 1 to the end because it's very relevant that we cover the important revelations. I know we read it in the morning, but let's just look at it again just to juggle our memories. The Bible says, Then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, and said to them, you have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren this many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandments of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest to your brethren as he promised them. Now therefore return, go to your tent and to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandment, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went to their tents. Verse seven. Now to, the half, to half the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given a possession in Bashan. To the other half of, the, of it, Joshua gave a possession among their brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away to their tent, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches to your tent, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. So the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and of the tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel as Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they had obtained according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Verse 10, and when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and of the tribe of Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great impressive altar. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, behold, the children of Reuben, the children of God and half the tribe of Manasseh have built an altar on the frontier on the land of Canaan in the region of the Jordan on, on the children of Israel's side. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together at Shiloh to go to war against them. Then the children of Israel sent Phineas the son of Eleazar, the priest to the children of Reuben, to the children of God, and to have the tribe of Manasseh into the land of Gilead. And with him, 10 rulers, one ruler each from the chief house of every tribe of Israel. And each one was the head of the house of his father among the divisions of Israel. Then they came to the children of Reuben, to the children of God, and to have the tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead. And they spoke with them saying, thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, what treachery is this that you have committed against the Lord of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord in that you have built for yourselves an altar that you might rebel this day against the Lord? Is the iniquity of pure not enough for us from which we are not cleansed till this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord, but that you must turn away this day from following the Lord and it shall be if you rebel today against the Lord that tomorrow you will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. Nevertheless, if the land of your possession is unclean, and cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and take possession amongst us. 
But do not rebel against the Lord, nor rebel against us by building yourselves an altar beside the altar of the Lord, our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zarah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that man did not perish alone in iniquity. Verse 21. Then the children of Reuben, the children of God, and now the tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the divisions of Israel, the Lord God of gods, the Lord God of lords, he knows. And let Israel itself know. If it is in rebellion or if it is in treachery against the Lord, do not save us this day. If we have built ourselves an altar to turn from following the Lord, or if to offer on it burnt offering or grain offerings, or if to offer peace offerings on it, then the Lord himself require an account. But in fact, we have done it for fear, for a reason, saying, in time to come, your descendants may speak to our descendants, saying, what have you to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord has, has made the Jordan a border between you and us, you children of Reuben and children of God. You have no part in the Lord. So your descendants make our descendants cease fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, let us now prepare to build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offering, not for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between you and us and our generation after us, that we may perform the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offering, with our sacrifices and with our peace offering, that your descendant may not say to our descendants in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Therefore, we said that it will be when they say this to us or to our generation in time to come, that we may say, here is the replica of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, though not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifices, but it is a witness between you and us. Verse 29, far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord and turn from following the Lord this day to build an altar for burnt offering, for grain offering, or for sacrifices beside the altar of the Lord our God, which is before his tabernacle. Now when Phineas, the priest, and the rulers of the congregation, the heads of the divisions of Israel who were with him, heard the words that the children of Reuben, the children of God, and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them. Then Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, said to the children of Reuben, the children of God, and the children of Manasseh, this day we perceive that the Lord is amongst us, because you have not committed this, this treachery against the Lord. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, and the rulers returned from the children of Reuben and the children of God, and from the land of Gilead to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought back word to them. So the thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God. And they spoke no more of going against them in battle to destroy the land where the children of Reuben and God dwelt. The children of Reuben and the children of God called the altar witness, for it is a witness between us and the Lord is God, and that the Lord is God. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his words today. There are very uh, great lessons to be learned from today's reading. Just like the children of Israel, we are approaching the end of this uh, period of separation, this season of consecration and fasting. We're about to go into a season of unlimited feasting. It's important that we do not lose sight of all that we have learned on this mountain. We must have no other substitute but all our focus and attention must be on the Lord God of Israel this year. He alone is worthy of our worship. He loves us jealously and will not share his glory with anyone. Please make sure that he is all that moves you. Joshua told the children of Israel in verse 5 uh, of this chapter to take careful heed to do the commandments and the law which Moses, to do the commandments of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded them to love the Lord their God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him, to serve him with all their heart and with all their soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. We have also been through many instructions on this altar, both individually and collectively. The Lord has promised to shock us beyond our imagination in the coming year with a display of his splendor and glory. He has promised us tangible blessings and real estate wealth. Like the Reubenites, Gadites, and the tribe of Manasseh, when the assignment was done on, that, on, on, the, on the west side, they went back to the east where their possession was waiting for them. And Joshua spoke to them saying, return with much riches. Return to your tents with very much livestock, 
with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoils of your enemy with your brethren. You see that God is a God of detail. He leaves nothing out. And they return to the other side of the Jordan with tangible blessings and massive wealth. So also will you return from this fast with abundant increase waiting for you. You will receive letters of divine liftings, loan forgiveness, debt write-offs, scholarships, accelerated promotion, and unexpected financial increase. After this fast, some people will have their bills miraculously paid in full. You will get strange checks in the mail. The Lord will open strange doors before you. You will step into higher grounds. As we step into 2023, you will dine with kings. Your status will change for good. You will step into newness. You will dine with nobles. You will have a permanent change of address. Just like the children of Israel possessed land, you will possess real estate wealth and own landed properties. Men of stature will call for you to be part of their profitable ventures. You will blossom without sweat. I said you will blossom without sweat. Men will call for you and say, just because you're a man and woman of integrity, you are the one we want to do this business with. You are the one we want to partner with. You will eat the good of the land in Jesus' mighty name. All this and more will catch up with you and overtake you in the new year. Please make sure that you build no substitute altar. You must not be distracted from your mission to keep knowing the Lord and serving him with all your heart. Whatever you do this year, consider the repercussions. Consider the consequences, the consequences that it holds for you and your entire family, like Achan, the son of Zara. You must consider the consequences it holds for the con congregation of God, like the congregation of Israel. And you must consider the, the consequences it holds for your nation, just like the nation of Israel was mindful of the consequences of idolatry on the entire nation. Two cases were cited here. And we see that though one man committed one sin, each time the whole congregation paid for it, they bought the consequences. The first was Zimri, who brought a Midianite woman named Cosby into the tent to defile it. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, struck them both through with a javelin in Numbers chapter 25. You can read it in your spare time. The second case was that of Achan, the son of Zara, who touched the accursed thing by stealing. He was ensnared by the spirit of covetousness. We dealt extensively with that in one of our lessons. His sin had great impact on his immediate family and the entire nation of Israel. Because of the sin of one man, a whole nation fled before their enemies. The entire congregation had learned a valuable lesson at this point, and so they had zero tolerance for sin and they refuse to operate in disobedience. Some people may be using the grace we have in Christ Jesus as an excuse for sin, but grace is actually an empowerment to live holy. It is the divine ability giving us to overcome the proclivities of the flesh. You must decide to use the grace of our Lord to live in dominion over sin this year, terrorizing the kingdom of darkness, and you must use it for the deliverance of many in Jesus' name. The empowerment we are talking about is greater in glory than what the children of Israel ever experienced. They returned with much riches. They returned with silver, with gold and the like under the old covenant. But see what the Bible says about the new dispensation in 2 Corinthians 3, 8 and 9. He said, how would the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceed much more in glory. In verse 10 of this chapter that we read, chapter 22 of the book of Joshua, the Bible says they built a replica altar. And when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of God, and of the tribe of Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great, impressive altar. If you remember the altars that God instructed the children of Israel to build in the book of Joshua, you see one at Gilgal. That was their resting place. That was a place of circumcision and consecration. Another one was Ebal and Shiloh, the place of, the, of his presence, the tabernacle of meetings. Who does the altar of the Lord represent? Is a place of consecration, deep intimacy, divine encounter, and divine instruction. It is usually a place of higher calling and a deeper work with God. At first, when the remaining tribes had, the, they had built an altar on the other side of Jordan. They were furious and they were ready to destroy them because they knew the implication of idolatrous altars. They were not ready to be burned by any fire of iniquity like before. They arose quickly to address the matter. 
But when they met with the half-tribe of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh and communicated effectively with them, they found out that it was no substitute but a monument. They were trying to replicate the fellowship and exploit that experience on the other side with the remaining tribes. I want to encourage you to, when you leave this altar of fasting and prayer, because we're about to end <laughs> this study, ensure that you raise a family altar in your home. Make sure you designate a personal time where you worship before the Lord, where you study his word diligently. Don't wait for the church to call a fast before you seek the Lord with passion and fervency. Make it a way of life. Don't stop praising him. Don't wait for the walls of Jericho to emerge before you pick a night of high praise or declare a week of trumpets. Make it a lifestyle. Don't wait for the pastor to assign scriptures for Bible study before you open your Bible daily. Make it a daily habit of feeding your spirit man. The man that God shares the secret with is the one who is always on the altar, the prayer watch. Do not neglect your post. Although they have tried on the other side of the Jordan meant well when they built the monumental altar, but it almost led to a civil war. They wanted to do something good without checking with the leadership. They meant well, but it broke, it invoked wrath and it broke ranks. The idea was a very good one, but was not by divine instruction. It was not a precept ordained by God. It was not an instruction given to prophet Moses or Joshua, their leader. So it amounted to a monument. If you look around with trained eyes in our generation, I'm sure you can design a true altar of the Lord from a monumental altar. Please do not make the mistake of building a dummy altar for building sake. Please make sure that when you build an altar, is a meeting place with the Lord. An altar of fire, an altar of encounter. It was almost as if they built the altar just to prove the point. They built it because they thought the altar at Shiloh was a bit far. If you notice, the Lord didn't back this altar up with his fire or his presence. It was simply an edifice. Please make sure as you step into the new year, you do not build any replica altar. God will not indwell a lookalike altar. He will only indwell a true altar. The reason why the whole congregation of Israel arose quickly to address whatever looked like idolatry was because they knew how much God hates idolatry and the judgment it will bring on them as a nation. They were not ready to suffer the consequences, hence their immediate reaction. Like the rest of the congregation of Israel, we must be zealous for the things of God this year. Evangelism, charitable giving, prayer, mission work, we must be ready to run and communicate effectively with our assigned leadership, the leadership delegated and designated over us so that we do not break ranks. The half tribe of uh, Israel, the half tribe of Gad, Reuben and Manasseh could have run the idea before Joshua. They could have talked with the elders before building this monument. They could have asked God for direction. They could have asked for their own memorial in a proper way. He would have given them something. And he will have shown them his perfect intent and given them instruction and direction. But they took matters into their own hands and it led to a near disaster. My question for you today is, how are you serving God? Are you doing it on your own terms? Are you doing it based on divine instruction? Second Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. We will not be disqualified in Jesus' mighty name. If you approach the altar of the Lord as a monument, all you will get from it is a monument. There will be no fire or tangible presence there. You will see that Deuteronomy 6, 4 clearly says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, is the only one. You shall love the Lord God with your heart, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. How do you love him? The answer is clearly written for us to say, look for it. Jesus replied to him, he says it is written, forever remain written. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This was when he was responding to the temptation from Satan to bow before him <laughs> for worldly pleasures. And he said, far be it, I will not worship any other God. So your love for God must be displayed in heartfelt worship, kingdom service, charitable giving. Our service to God and to humanity must be from the heart. It must be all about artmanship, not showmanship. It must be about the Lord, not any performance to impress other men. 
It must come from a heart of service to please him and him alone. God is still looking for men and women who will seek his face about their families, about their churches, about their neighborhood, about their nation and their entire generation. He's looking for transformational leaders. He's looking for generational intercessors. He's looking for those who will pray down his will over nations. Will you be that one in this generation? Will he find you like he found the man Joshua? He's looking for the sons of Aaron, like Phineas, the son of Eleazar, who will bear the burden of their brothers and the entire nation in constant prayer and intercession. The Bible says in Exodus 28, 29, so Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on his breastplate. Imagine having a list of people that you intercede for on a daily basis. This is the calling of the Levite, the priest of God. He said, he shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on his breastplate of judgment over his heart. We must carry the, the heart of intercession. He said, when he goes into the holy place as a memorial before the Lord, continually, this ones know how to inquire from God effectively about what should be done and what not should be done. I mean, about what should be done and what should not be done. He said in Exodus chapter 28, verse 30, and you shall put in the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and the Tumim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. So Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. The Urim and the Tumim, Tumim were white and black stones used to inquire before the Lord. Yes and no answers in the Old Testament about the things that concern Israel as a nation. Are you willing to serve the Lord in this capacity? Asking the Lord his will for your nation. Asking the Lord his will for your generation. Asking him his will for your family, for your children, for the year. Are you willing to serve the Lord in the prayer ministry? In the Imatru prayer ministry, we are still looking for intercessors, men and women who we pray day and night, who intercede selflessly for others. We are looking for kingdom sponsors. We are looking for people to join our prayer team. We are recruiting creative men and women who will help manage our social media platforms. Are you a qualified or gifted graphic designer? We need your help. We want to re revamp our website. We need event planners, logistics, editors, caterers, doctors, for our future mission, we need your talent. Everyone is calling for it. Everyone is important in this work. That ability in you was placed there by God for such a time as this. That wisdom, that understanding was specially given to you as his workmanship. It is primarily, primarily to promote his kingdom. When your journey on this side of eternity is done, what will be your testimony? Is your life about me, myself, and I? About God, his kingdom, and his people? Is your prayer life to minister to the Lord or simply an avenue to meet your selfish needs? Are you fasting for your personal increase or the increase of his kingdom? Your money, is it just for you and your little family? Or are you impacting lives with your giving? When was the last time somebody went before the Lord to give thanks for your sake? Does your existence on the earth make any difference for anyone else but for yourself? When the Lord is recording the testimonies of Nehemiah, May your name be there. When the Lord is bragging about the uncommon breed of intercessors in this generation, may you be numbered among them. When the Lord, <laughs> when the heavenly roll call is being called for exploits in prayer in this generation, may you be one of them. When the Lord is picking up men and women after his own heart in our generation, may your name be one of them. May you please the Lord with your prayer, your fasting and your giving. May your workmanship in his kingdom be seen before the Lord as artsmanship, not showmanship. May your altar sizzle with revelation and power. And finally, as we step into the new year, where I know that you'll be blessed beyond measure, academically, financially, professionally, and in your marriage, do not substitute the altar of the Lord for any replica. Please do not substitute the altar of the Lord with idols made with hands. You must remember the Lord thy God because it is him who gives you the power to get wealth. It is him who gives you the power to get anything you have. There's nothing we have that did not come from him. Serve him continually. Love him unreservedly. Let your children contact the same intensity that you have contacted on this altar. That would be the best in inheritance that you can pass on to them. He's beyond any material wealth. If they know him, they will also do great exploits for the Lord. It's time for us to pray. Let's give him praise because he's worthy. Let's exalt him because he's kind. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. 
Father, you have shown us kindness on this altar. Thank you for the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you. Thank you for the 19th day of this fast. Thank you for showing us the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. We are so grateful. Father, take all the praise and glory. We are so grateful for showing us the types and the shadows in the book of Joshua. We are so grateful for calling us the Joshua generation. Thank you, Lord for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Thank you for giving us eye-popping encounter. Thank you for giving us heartwarming encounters. Thank you for giving us ear-popping encounters. Thank you for the revelation that has been pouring since this first began. Thank you for the breath in us. Thank you for how far you have brought us in the year 2022. Yes, we are the closing days of this year. You said better is the end of it than the beginning thereof. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We rejoice greatly for the exploits earmarked for the year 2023. We can see that the year 2023 is a year of exploits. We are so grateful. Thank you for the breath in me, O oh God. Thank you for how far you have brought me. Thank you for my household. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my foundation. Thank you for my future. I greatly rejoice for the exploit earmark for the year 2023. Be thou exalted, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the last quarter of this year. Thank you, Lord, for the last week of this year. Thank you, Lord, for the <laughs> Father, Lord, for everything you have done. Thank you for the privilege to examine myself and to see myself in the mirror of your word. Thank you for the privilege to serve with all my heart and have a deeper, more intimate work with you. Take all the praise and glory. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he said, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? unless indeed you are disqualified. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to look into your word. Our Father, Lord, the perfect law of liberty. Thank you for the word, that is the engrafted word of truth that is able to save our soul, that is able to transform us. We give you praise, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the last quarter of this year. Thank you for everything you have done in the first quarter, in the second, in the third, and this final quarter. We are so grateful that they take all the praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for a more intimate work with you, a deeper work with you, a meaningful work with you, that they take all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are going to say, Lord, you are going to say, Lord, we give you heartfelt praise for what you have done for us in the Immature Prayer Ministry. Let us give him praise. Let us magnify him. The Bible says, let the people praise him. Let all the people praise him. Then the earth will yield that increase. God, our own God, shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall flare in. Do you know that he has done us well in this altar? He has done us well. Father, we thank you. We give you heartfelt praise. Thank you for all answered prayer on this altar, for the healings we are fear of, and some major deliverances that we are clueless about. Thank you, Father, for some of the surgeries you perform when we go to bed and we wake up, we are healed and healthy. Ah, Father, we give you praise. Mention the specific things you have enjoyed. Divine healing, spiritual growth, deliverance, breakthrough. If you take a stock of the lessons we have learned on this altar, we have grown tremendously through his teaching, through his mercy. Come on, give him praise. Lord, we thank you for breakthroughs, spiritual breakthroughs, financial breakthroughs, marital breakthroughs. We thank you for miracles. The one that our eyes can see, the one that our eyes cannot even see. We thank you for safety. We thank you for journey mercies, for our family, for birthdays, for new jobs, for professional anniversaries, for salvation, for successful procedures, whether it's day surgery or week-long surgeries. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for loan forgiveness. Thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for life birth of all our new babies. Our Lord, we give you praise for new homes, for territorial victories. We give you praise for divinely orchestrated relationships. We bless your name, Daddy. Take all the praise and glory. Take all the adoration. Take all the praise, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are going to pray and say, Lord, confirm your word in my life. As I move from this period of fasting to a season of unlimited feasting in the new year, I move from glory to glory. I will grow from grace to grace in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, confirm your word. Let your word find fulfillment in my life. Just as you made your word come to pass in the life of the children of Israel. Lord, confirm your word in my life. As I move from this period of fasting and I'm praying to a season of unlimited feasting, to a season of celebration of your goodness, I move from glory to glory and I will grow from grace to grace in Jesus' mighty name. My entire household will serve the Lord with fervency. My entire household will serve you. Our Father, Lord, in the year coming, 
and beyond. We will have no substitute whatsoever. I declare that I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel, according to the word of God. The Bible says in jo Joshua chapter 22, verse 5, he said, take careful heed to do the commandments and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in his commandment, to keep his commandment, to hold fast to him, to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tent. Father, Lord, as we also are wrapping up this fast, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that we will obey your word. My entire household will serve you with fervency in 2023 and beyond. We will have no substitute altar. I declare that I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We are going to declare, I'm walking into 2023 with much riches, just as the word of God said in Job, Joshua 22 verse 8. He said, and he spoke to them, return with much riches to your tent with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. I want you to declare, I'm walking into 2023 with much riches, with unspeakable blessing. My bills are paid in full. As I step into higher ground, I return with from this end of year fast, from this spiritual preparation, with much riches, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and much clothing, just like the children of Israel. I, en I enjoy the blessing of the Lord. I return from this end of year spiritual preparation with much riches, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, with much clothing, and just like the children of Israel in Jesus' mighty name. Father, refine me for your glory. Use me for your specific assignment, the one prepared for me beforehand. Anoint me for supernatural exploits in your kingdom as I serve with my time, with my talent and treasure. Equip me for extraordinary service to humanity. I operate in full capacity, in audacity and potency. I will not operate in timidity or fear. I operate, O oh Lord Father, in full capacity. I will not operate below potential. I operate in full capacity. I will not live below potential. I operate in full potency. In the mighty name of Jesus, I anoint me for exploit like Joshua. Joshua. Father, Lord, let everything you wrote concerning me in the destiny book come to pass. Use me for the specific assignments promised to God. Prepare for me before and anoint me for supernatural exploits in your kingdom as I serve with my time, my talent, and my treasure. Equip me for extraordinary service to humanity. In Jesus' mighty name, I operate in full capacity, audacity, and potency. Lord, I choose to serve you today with all my heart, with all my soul and strength. Empower me to worship you with all my spirit, soul, and body. Let my service to you be totally from the heart, not to impress any man in Jesus' mighty name. I refuse to build a monument, but an altar of true worship. I refuse to build a monument. I refuse to build a replica, but an altar of deep intimacy, an altar of worship, an altar of prayer, an altar of encounter, an altar where you show up, oh God, just like you show up in the tabernacle of meetings in at Gilgal, I choose to serve you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might. Empower me to worship you with all my spirit, soul, and body. Let my service to you be from the heart. Let it not be to impress men. Let it not be to attract human accolade in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it not be to impress men. Let it not be about showmanship. Let it be about heartmanship. I refuse to build a monument. Ah, Lord, but a true altar in Jesus' mighty name. Father, help me to grow in giving in my prayer and fasting. Let it be a ministry to you. Let it be, oh God, I Lord, the heart of worship to you in my giving, in my praying, and my fasting. Just as your word said in Matthew chapter 6, empower me as a channel of blessing to my generation. Give me the resources needed to sponsor missions and to spread the good news. Help me to make your kingdom business a priority at all times. I want to serve you with the first and the best of my time, my talent, and my treasure. May I never offer you leftovers again in Jesus' name. May I never offer you leftovers again in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says serve the Lord with all your heart. The Bible says with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. The Bible says offer the Lord. He said thanksgiving. The Bible said with the first fruit of your increase, you should serve him with your first fruit. Our Father Lord, give me the grace to serve you with the first and the best of my time, the first and the best of my day, the first and the best of my weeks, the first and the best of my month, the first and the best of my increase in the name of Jesus. Give me the resources needed to sponsor mission and to spread the gospel. Help me to make your kingdom business a priority at all time in jesus mighty name amen you are going to say father baptize me with fresh fire for the ministry of intercession anoint me as a generational watchman empower me as a transformational servant leader like joshua give me the grace to win many national battles 
on my knees. Make me a giant slayer like the Joshua generation. Make me a giant slayer. If you look back at all the previous chapters we have read, the Bible says that they slew of the king of Bashan, the still son, the king of the Amorite, the still, you know, uh, Arba, the, the, the king of Kejat Arba, you know, he was the father of the Enax. I, I want you to pray and say, Lord, make me a giant slayer. Like the, joy, the Joshua generation, Father, baptize me with fresh fire, fresh anointing, the fire that cannot be quenched, the fire that cannot be compromised. Uh, anoint me as a generational watchman because when you're in contact with this altar, you'll be in contact with this fire. Empower me as a transformational leader, a servant leader, a true leader, a selfless that like Joshua, he made sure that everybody was empowered. He made sure that everybody got their allotment. He was not about swallowing his own increase or getting his own needs met. It was about the old nation. It was about the mandate. It was about his predecessor's mandate, the commandments of God, not about his own personal agenda. Say, Lord, give me the grace to win many national battles on my knees. Make me a giant slayer like the Joshua generation. Father, help me to run with vision and precision as this year runs swiftly to an end. Help me to run with your spirit of discernment every step of the way. Do not let let me break ranks or come up with my own replica altar or my own false agenda. Let me only run with your heavenly mandate. Let me run with your divine agenda, not my own. Some of us mean well. Some people mean well. You want to do it. You want to, oh, you know, you want to create a prayer altar. You want to do something. You want to start ministry. You are zealous for the Lord. But is that what God has called you to do? Is that what God, because it might be the lost plan, but it may not be time. It might be the lost plan, but it's still calling you to apprenticeship. It's still calling you to serve. It's still calling you to, you know, to obey instructions. It's still calling you to learn discipline. But many of us, we pray and God, we jump ahead. We are zealous, just like the children of the half tribe of God, uh, Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh, that went to build the replica altar on the other side and it almost created a disaster for Israel. I want you to pray and say, Father, Help me to run with vision and precision. Help me to run with instruction as this year winds down. Let me understand what you want for this season. Help me to run with the spirit of discernment every step of the way. Let me not come up with my own idea. Do not let me break ranks. Do not let me come up with a replica altar or a false mandate. Father, Lord, let me only run with your heavenly mandate. In Jesus' mighty name, you are going to pray. We intercede on this altar. I want you to pray and say, Father, raise men and women of substance from this ministry to sponsor kingdom mission. Father, Lord, we are praying. Father, Lord, we we are praying, Zele Kia Bazuda Kia Bazuda ta, ta, ta. Father, we are praying, raise uncommon breed of transformational intercessors, kingdom sponsors, uncommon stewards, uh, those who will serve you with their talent, with their treasure, with their time. Ah, Riba Zele Kia, selfless, loyal. Ah, Father Lord, ambidextrous, tenacious. Ah, uh, Riba Sulo Kia Mazuta ta, ta, ta. Raise men and women of substance from this ministry. Ah, Diba Zele Kia Mazuta ta, ta, ta. Father, we call for a great breakthrough for everyone connected to this altar of prayer today. We pray for anyone who is in debt, who is distressed who is discouraged ah, to receive divine breakthrough. Father, we pray, Zalika Toli Ababa, make this a mountain of solutions today. Let there be healing, let there be divine lifting, let there be career advancement, academic success, miracles, science, wonders. Ah. We declare deliverance from all demonic affliction. We proclaim exaltation for all buried destiny in the name of Jesus. Father, let everyone come back with tangible testimony, undeniable miracles in the name of Jesus. Make us a ministry of come and see. Make us a ministry of come and see. Let everybody know that you are with us on this altar. Do not let us just be a monumental altar. Do not let us just be one of those virtual altars. Do not let us be one of those altars that make noise. Let us be an altar where the, your presence is tangible, where your presence is palpable, where there's miracle signs and wonder. Father, use us, O Lord, Father. As the new breed, as the Joshua generation, in the name of Jesus, raise uncommon women of substance from here. Raise men and women of substance, notable miracles on this altar. Father, undeniable signs and miracles. Our Father, Lord, raise us as an uncommon breed of leaders, oh God, intercessors, kingdom sponsors, on common stewards in Jesus' mighty name. It's time for our communion. I want you to take your bread and your wine and say, Lord, by this table, expose any replica altar in my life. Let your fire burn off every lukewarmness, complacency, and emptiness resulting from the monuments I've built in the past. Some of us have built monuments around traditional church. That's the church that my grandfather went to, is the church that my father went to, is the church that I'm going to. Is the way we do it in our family. Some of us are built monuments. We are built replicas. We are built false altars. Some of us are going to mega churches. Not that there's anything wrong with mega churches. If that's where God has called you to go there. Some of us are, are going there because of the, of the noise, of the monuments. But is that where God called you to serve? Is that where he's calling you to at this time? Is that your Shiloh? Is that your Gilgal? 
Is that the place of consecration? I want you to pray. I say, Father, expose any replica altar in my life. Let your fire burn off every form of lukewarmness, complacency, emptiness resulting from the monument I've built, whether it's personal or corporate, whether it's personal or in my local assembly, Father, I expose it. Today, I contact the anointing of an intercessor. I contact the fire of prayer. I contact the power of praise. I walk away from this table with a true heart of worship, and I become a wonder to my generation in Jesus' name. Our Father, Lord, from this altar, I contact the true heart of an intercessor. The fire of prayer, the power of praise. I walk away from this altar with a true heart of worship, the heart of service. Our Lord, make me a wonder. Make my generation, my family a wonder. Ah, in this generation, in Jesus' mighty name. Let's take the bread together and break it. Let's give thanks and break it and eat it in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take your bread and eat. In the same manner, let's take the cup and drink it. That the Lord, as we drink this cup, will receive infusion of strength, of zeal and fervency. Father, Lord, let the fire that cannot be quenched be set off in us as we drink of this cup. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise for answered prayer. Father, we worship you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we magnify you. Be thou glorified forever. In Jesus' name, amen. The 19 instruction. As your preferred watch, prophetically speak into each month of the coming year and call forth your memorial stones one by one. Has the Lord to show you the year in pictures. Read Joshua 23 for tomorrow. The Lord bless you as you do so. 20 people to raise 20,000, 17K achieved. Hallelujah. 3,000 to go. I know we're able to do it because the Lord is our helper. Amen. It's not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, O oh Lord. We give you thanks for what you have done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. He has helped set the captives free and open the prison doors. Oh, see what the Lord has done. We are grateful. Daddy, hey, ya da 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 da, Zema Zunda yanda da, we are grateful, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done in the Imaya truth. Thank you, Daddy, we are grateful. Oh, Lord, Father, we are grateful. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. Our souls have found rest. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks. We are grateful, God. We are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. In the midst of scarcity, in the midst of people calling you know, all kind of negativity. You raised 20,000 in our midst. We believe this is done. We believe that four families are blessed. We are so grateful. Adi, for what you are doing, thank you. We say thank you. You have amazed us. <laughs> we are stupefied by your goodness. Who are we? Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We use these seeds, this sacrifice as a point of contact for every family represented. We say, Lord, just like the children of Israel, they were blessed in everything, in silver, in gold, in clothing, in, in bronze, in all the articles, in real estate wealth, in everything material and supernatural, in covering. Their enemies fled before them. The nations feared them. You suffered no man to do them wrong. You said, turn on my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You gave them everything they could ever hope for. You brought the fulfillment of prophecy concerning every single tribe. You settled them. You gave them rest round about. We tap into the same. Father, from this altar of sacrifice, we are so grateful. Thank you, almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. At 21, this end of year fast continues. 
we continue to observe the three watches. Don't be tired because <laughs> better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. I know we are seeing visions, we are seeing dreams. And as we pray in tongues, God is activating things in us. I see the recalibration of destinies. So many destinies are being rewired. I'm going to be surprised. Massive things waiting for us as we step into 2023. You hit the ground running in the name of Jesus. Don't miss the three watches, 6 a.m. midday evening. And we come 20 minutes early at 6 a.m. and midday um, evening watch. At midday, we pray at, at you know five minutes early. So come join us. <laughs> Your life will never remain the same. If you'd like to receive updates, please send a text message to that telephone. Thanks for all those who have done so. And sorry for all those who have missed out on the uh, updates because um, the phone resets. And now you can now see the updates. If you have any loved one that still needs to get the updates or wants to receive daily updates, please send their information to us and we'll add them. Also, if you want to share your testimony, your feedback or prayer request, you can text it to this number or email neymatrupa.gmail.com. Sabbatical break. Hallelujah. God ordains rest. He ordains Sabbath. So after this fast from December 25th to January 8th, by the grace of God, we will not be meeting on this altar daily. We will rest for two weeks and then we will resume back by the grace of God, January 9th. We look forward to seeing you then. But please remember that we come back for our crossover December 31st at 11.45 p.m. to be short, to be sharp, to be sweet, to be full of praise. And then we enter into the new year prophetically. Hallelujah. Let's share the name of your benediction. I'm blessed with the blessing of the Father God Almighty. I am blessed with the blessing of heaven above in Christ Jesus. I am blessed with the blessing of the field. I am blessed with the blessing of the deep within. I am blessed with the blessing of the breast. I am blessed with the blessing of the womb. I am blessed with all spiritual material and marital blessings this season. I am blessed when I go out and when I come in. My blessing exceeds that of my ancestors and all those who have gone ahead of me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. See you in the morning at 5.40 a.m. Bye for now.